Good afternoon. I'm here to give you a snapshot, uh, honest and open, about uh, hydrogen as a mar marine fuel. Um, on behalf of Zestas. Zestas is the uh, Zero Emission Ship Technology Association, um, gathering 50 members, uh, ship owners, technology providers, uh, project managers, uh, Bureau Veritas as well, um, focused on, on zero emission technologies because uh, reducing GHG is one thing, but uh, you also need absolute zero emission technologies to get to zero eventually. And that is was what uh, Zesta's members are working in, um, advocating at the IMO and, and working with different governments, but obviously uh, developing projects as well, as you will see later. Um, Uh, looking at some of the fuels, obviously the industry needs to have a look at, at all uh, fuels that are available now. These are interesting times. Uh, as we saw and heard this morning, there is a lot of regulatory uncertainty. Um, but one thing is for sure, uh, wind and e-hydrogen and uh, clean electricity are the only absolute zero emission fuels that we can think of today. And um, that is what Zestas is working on now. Hydrogen, um, TRL9, CRL2. So that is a challenge as I will show you. There are, uh, there are vessels, there are technologies onshore and, and offshore for, for hydrogen, for bunkering as well. Um, that is proven, that has been deployed uh, in, in various pilot projects and we consider that those technologies are at TRL 9 at the moment. Um, the challenge is on scaling up, on deploying this at a commercial level, so definitely um, Hydrogen is, has not been deployed at a large scale yet, and that is the next step. That is what Zesta's members are, are focused on at the moment. Um, a submission here uh, by Zesta's at the IMO summarizes this situation. Uh, if you're interested, there is a link here. I'll make sure you get it when we discuss later. Um, Oops, voila. So what does it mean to scale up at this moment for, for hydrogen? Um, short sea shipping uh, seems like where uh, the technology is. So on an assumption of 10 to 20 tons for, for tanks, those technologies exist. Um, up to 2.5 megawatts of uh, fuel cells, a up to four megawatt hours batteries, uh, provides a two week range and for a 5,000 uh, gross, gross ton uh, vessel. So, so that's in the North Sea uh, region, what would be expected for a commercial development that makes sense for, for short sea shipping. Um, we're there technologically and uh, the challenge is to make it happen. So some examples of hydrogen vessels uh, sailing at the moment around the world. Um, in the top, uh, the LH2 ferry uh, is called a Hydra, it's deployed in Norway. It's, it's a ferry that's got a capability of uh, um, 80 cars, uh, 300 passengers. Um, give you a little specs as well. Um, it refuels in one hour with a three tons tank, uh, which provides a 
a three weeks autonomy for, for that ship in Norway, obviously from point A to point B. Um, the super yacht you're seeing here was launched, I believe, last year um, with a three megawatt fuel cell, currently the largest marine um, fuel cell, um, and, um, and a liquid tank of 4.4 tons storage, which is quite large for a, for a vessel. The, um, the island barge is an inland barge, uh, the, the green one in the bottom that is deployed in, um, in the Netherlands. Uh, the Viking cruise ship you're seeing here is using hydrogen for its auxiliary power. Um, it's the largest cruise ship using hydrogen at the moment and Viking ordered uh, four more systems to be deployed in, in similar ships um, in the near future. And interestingly, as one other piece of the puzzle, um, the, um, the liquid hydrogen, it, it's a liquid hydrogen tanker that you're seeing there that's transporting uh, liquid hydrogen from Australia to Japan, Japan using hydrogen for different usage. But again, uh, proven capability and technology to, to transport the fuel. Um, now looking at a few ships under construction for hydrogen. Um, again, some of them auxiliary, auxiliary power. Um, the, um, yeah. Again, you have uh, container ships, two of them from point A to point B, uh, from Norway to the Netherlands, where there are port infrastructures uh, in the North Sea. What does uh, an absolute zero ecosystem looks like? Um, obviously, there are a few. Eventually, uh, when deployed with existing technologies uh, and obviously important investments, um, onshore, offshore charging and, and different vessels, you can have a, a, in a region such as the North Sea, where you see um, already liquid hydrogen bunkering fa fa uh, facilities in Norway, in the Netherlands, in Belgium um, and uh, very soon in the UK, we believe, um, with, with the vessels that uh, I just showed you and the capability, the inshore infrastructure and port infrastructure uh, for bunkering, um, we, we believe that the pieces of the puzzle are in place for uh, short sea shipping in that region. Uh, as a first region in the world. Um, so in that vein, uh, Zestas is organizing in Aberdeen uh, an event we call Ship 030 in September, gathering uh, leaders from the sector, ship owners, technology providers, um, regulators um, from the North Sea region mainly to uh, to get this going, to, to focus on the obstacles and uh, to roll it out for, for, um, for the cases where it makes sense uh, financially, because as we've been saying, uh, the industry needs to, to make money in what it does, um, but we also need to invest in, in absolute zero technologies to get to, uh, to zero emission in 25 years. So, Thank you, looking forward to your questions.